guys that have had a chance, I will be the first chapter. And you can see it is very short. Agreed? It is short, agreed. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering what happened. And would I be correct in saying that a lot of people have completed intro? I usually begin by going around the room just to get a feel as to where we are. So we'll start from my right. Introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yannick Johnson. Um, I currently work at Fidelity Bank on um, Rail. What do you do? I am a unit compliance officer. Okay. All right. Uh, good morning. I'm Damani Horton. I'm an attorney at law. I work in a family firm. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natasha Sanders. I'm employed at Genesis Fund Services, and I'm a junior administrator for the Hello. Is Ashley? I'm still in the wrong room. Oh, yes, I am. Yeah, they're trying to get better. It's too cold. Now it's too warm. Hi, I'm Samantha. <laughs> I'm only sitting in the back just for the day. I like to sit in the front because I just have to catch everything. Miss Hatcher, no, I just have to catch everything. But I date so, yeah. <laughs> and I try to drink tea, but it's nice meeting you all. Um, Rose Josie, police officer, attached to um. The money laundering section of the Oh, that's company. wonderful. What unit are you attached to? Now? Mm-hmm. Or are you going into that unit? Maybe. Based on this course? Maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's Maybe. I have way gone, huh? I know you, but introduce yourself to the class. Byron Aubrey. Uh, I work at Island Up, University of Compliance Department. Okay. Morning, Darlene Penn, Polina Sharon, the common assistant. Accounting assistant? Accounting assistant. Okay. Okay, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Samantha Johnson. <laughs> Currently employed at home. Well, anyway, yeah, because I was one of the second to the last set, Royal Bank on the 28th of February. Who they ask? So, okay, y'all can go now. Yeah, but so right now, I'm at home. Okay. But I'm working still, so you know, where else. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, we. I'm employed at Private Investment Bank in the Compliance Department. Uh, I'm Vanessa Lockhart, and I'm an pharmacy administrator at Compliance Oh, okay. So let me ask you, what do you hold together with this second level? An A. Of course. <laughs> what? An A. An A? Yes. <laughs> an A? My students always say that. <laughs> and when I mark the papers, I don't see it. You don't see no. <laughs> it's the opposite. What? I need to give them more A's. Yes. A good understanding of the, um, the culture, if you will, of compliance and the reasons why we have that culture today. Okay. Okay. So I get a lot of questions from you. <laughs> what about you? Um, I want you to try everything together and I want it to be a smoother path to the next level. Good point. So you should have some questions. You know why I keep saying you should have questions, right? Focus me as to what it is that you're seeking to <coughs> Excuse me. All right? Anybody else? What do you hope to achieve? Why are you smiling? What do you hope to achieve? A better level of understanding uh, compliance regulation actually how it relates to the gaming industry because as you know it's more tailored towards financial institutions. Not necessarily. But my understanding. Okay. I mean I'm just saying yeah. I mean yeah we, we have so, to buy so, under the so same laws. Remind me to, to come back to that to you because it retains to her, him, him, her. Okay. Because there's only one piece of legislation or a couple pieces of legislation that covers this. But then you have the underlying legislation that govern how we function as an entity. Do you understand what I mean? Everybody understand what I mean? Do you understand what I mean? So even though you may be operating under 
another legislation. <coughs> There's still only one Proceeds of Crime Act. There's only one Financial Transaction Reporting Act that govern all of this money laundering and terrorist financing and proliferation of weapons. You understand? So it doesn't matter. Your job now is you have to take it and apply it to what you do. That's the hard part. And you can't apply it if you don't understand it, number one. You can't apply it if you don't read. This course requires more reading than the first class, which you did. And when you move to the next level, which I think you all are hoping to go to, it's even more reading. But if you take the time now to read, when you get to the next level, it will be a little bit easier for you. Because you will have the manual, but a lot of the references you're going to have to go to as your source, you would have read already. So the A is up to you. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, anybody else hope to achieve anything different? You? No? <laughs> you want an A? Anybody here is a boss over there, you mean? Huh? <laughs> 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 well, just just putting it out there. You know. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> and you're the last. And check this out. They go on me yesterday. Yeah. Asked me if I want to do some clean up work for them. And what you do? Clean up? No, no. Clean up as a clean up some accounts. Okay. Operational okay. stretcher. I mean, I know. I mean. All right. So today we're going to begin chapter one. You know, I'm here for chapter one and chapter two. And then I will take you to the end. Let me look on the thing. I'm sorry, I'll get you ready for the exam. All right? So, yes. Go ahead, no. I was just wondering what, what the exam format was, but we can talk about that when the time is right. Like, I, mean, I don't know anything about the exam. Is it like a three hour exam? Or mm -hmm. you know, get, and it's a well written exam. It's a, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. The questions are cr uh, crazy. Jeez. Yeah. Samantha, be quiet. Hey, girl. Okay. All right, so when we talk about money laundering and terrorist financing, <coughs> Excuse me. what are we actually talking about and why is it important to us here in the Bahamas? Anybody? Say that again for you. Why, when we, why do we talk about money laundering and terrorist financing and why is it important to us here in the Bahamas? Because that's like one of our second industries rely on it, which is what you're saying. We talk about our location, our people Okay, anybody else? Don't be quiet now. Oh, I forget to give you my first rule. I don't read the book. Yes, so let's put these points on as you begin to talk. One, blacklisting of the Bahamas. Two, Banking second industry. What a wonderful essay question. But well, let's go. Anybody else? Why is this important to us? Why do we need to do it? Why do we have to comply? Because we already found that these things too. We find out a lot of our Bahamas. Um, so we have financial action task force, so we can comply. Okay. Anybody else? You have, to, you have to eat your VDs before you come. Let's go. Could we say we just want to uh, get rid of their crimes? Okay. What else? Why do we need to do this? Why is 
is important. We keep talking about it every day. Every day it's in the newspaper. Every day, everywhere you go. Compliance used to be a position that never existed before. Then it was a position that was created and just created after we were blacklisted in 2000. We're in 2017. Now it is the most important job in every organization. And the person that heads compliance is more or less the top person in the organization. Why all of this shift? Why is it so important? Who is it important to? Mm -hmm. The tax regime. So. Yeah, we we'll move it into tax too. Mm -hmm. but, but tax still falls under, under all of this when you speak about money laundering. Mm -hmm. So let's take our minds back to 2000. What happened in 2000? I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry 2000, the blacklist. The blacklist thing. Right. Why were we blacklisted? Because we didn't have, we didn't have the things in place. Wow. We, I think <coughs> uh, we were slack on um, a lot of things, a lot of the fundamental things we required by our CEF. We didn't have in place. Okay, so in 2000 they said we did not have an AML framework in place, right. a robust one. Mm -hmm. And so we passed a suite of legislation mm -hmm. that were more stringent than other jurisdictions to make sure we were off the blacklist automatically. That hurt the Bahamas. We lost a lot of clients because they could not meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. So we moved from that, now we're here in 2017. How has the world changed? A lot of things being out of the ground. We have technology. Let's yeah. put that. We have technology. What else we have? What do you mean? Yeah. That's technology. Yeah, okay. That's technology. What else? How has, else has the world changed? Because these link together. You have more regulatory requirements. I will go to the point that you made. We have more of the, I'll say, I'll call them big countries seeking to fund their local economies. So, yes. So, if you look from 2000 to 2018, where we are now in 18 years, the world has shifted. When we started in 2000, we were blacklisted because we were known as a country where people walked with suitcases and deposited cash. We're in 2018. And remember, we are more or less a third world country even though financing is our second industry and we have a huge amount of assets under management, we're still in a developing world. So here, we had people walking in with large suitcases. Here now, we have moved into a technology base because we, at the same time being a third world country, is trying to keep pace with the bigger countries because this is where their funds are housed. So technology-wise, we had to keep up. We may not be as, as techno technologically savvy as United States or England or Switzerland or France, but we have the technology to do it. So based on those changes, if you look at our legislation from 2000 to 2018, there have been really no major amendments to it. Time has moved on. And so when we look at technology, we don't have the drug dealers that were back in the 1990s. These are younger ones, smarter ones, who use technology. 
they're not going to walk around with suitcases of cash. How do they launder now? How is money laundering done now? Transfer. Wire transfers. Wire transfers. What else? The, the mm -hmm. money laundering. Cards. <laughs> debit cards. <laughs> the money launderers so they don't need to walk around with cash. Gems, jewelry, houses, yachts, boats. Mm -hmm. Because these are the generation behind. The ones before would have stayed in their country, stayed in their little house, do whatever it has to do, have middlemen, bring the cash, and that was it. These are the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren of those people. So they're like you and I now. And they don't walk around with cash. They've grown up with wealth. They know what money is. They know what it is to find. They know what it is to travel. So they will buy planes. They will buy yachts. They will buy homes all around the world. And they walk around like you and I because they have legitimate businesses. Some may work, some may not work. But the money will flow through the legitimate business. So that's the challenge we face today. The next one, because between 2000 and 2018, we had a lot of financial crisis. We had banks collapsing from overlending. We had people deciding to change the structure of the organization based on technology. And if we add that the pressure from these countries finding out that as the economy is expanded, they didn't have sufficient monies to maintain it. So if you look around you here today, people keep complaining that there are potholes here. This isn't fixed. That isn't fixed. Money cannot come just from customs. You have to be taxed in order to maintain what you have. So even if you look at yourself, if you do not invest in yourself, either buying makeup, going to spa, updating your clothes, getting your teeth clean, having your physical, what will happen? You deteriorate. And it's the same thing with the country. So if we were to be taxed, the roads would be paved. If we were to be taxed, you see what I'm saying? You need more money. You have a huge civil service, they have to be paid. You have the nurses, they have to be paid. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Corruption is ideally that's how it should work. It should work. It should work. Yeah. That's how it should work. Yeah, that's how it should work. Yeah. But again, we are a docile set of people. When you look in South America or you look in Europe, they are taught from grade one. When people do not follow the law, you protest. We don't do that. Watch when you watch the news. What do you see, people? Thousands, hundred thousand people with placards. Where is you kill the dog, you kill the rat, you cross the road, you change the light, we didn't like it. They protest. They don't protest with five people. They shut down completely. We don't do that. So you cannot get what you want if you don't speak out. People keep saying it over and over again, but it will continue as it is, unless we do something as a people. Because changing a government doesn't change a mindset. The mindset starts with you, the voters. So, all of this money laundering and terrorist financing and weapons now of mass destruction, why are we looking at proliferation of weapons? Why is that important? You know what money laundering is? What happened? You know what money laundering is? We know what terrorist financing is. What is proliferation of weapons? Yes. Yes. So on the international front, proliferation of weapons is high priority. High. And especially for the Bahamas. So when it was money laundering, remember when the first prime minister went on his television interview, what did he tell the people? When they say we're responsible for all of the drugs coming to the United States, what did he say? So you all can't control them. So how a small country like we do not Yes, yeah. that's what he said. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And if we think, that's right. and it came to proliferation of weapons, what would he say? 
same, same thing. thing. Okay, so we're a country that sits in a very strategic location. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why you see all eyes are on the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. It's location. It's location. Mm -hmm. It's strategic. Yep. That's where God placed us. This is where we are. And in order to survive, we have to fight. And in order to fight, you must know the laws. And in order to know the laws, you have to take the pressure from the international players. And that's where we are today. We have to fight. In order to fight, you must know what the international requirements are. So when you're dealing with any one of those three, you have to know what the FATF says that we are required to do. So at the back of your book, you will see the 40 recommendations. These are the international recommendations that every country must apply by. So whenever you speak about any one of these three, they refer to that internationally. You must read it. You must know it. Yes, don't laugh. It's just the beginning. What's the first chapter in the Bible? Oh, there you go. <laughs> should identify, assess, and understand the money laundering and terrorist financing risk for the country. Remember I said that the FATF is the international framework. You have two frameworks, international and then domestic. Domestic means the Bahamian laws. International requirements is the FATF. Hmm? It's domestic. Right. That's domestic. So the FATF first recommendation said the country must assess this money laundering risk. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that was done? Or was it done? Or is it about to be done? Of being done properly. Yes. So the Bahamas took quite a while to assemble the relevant persons to contribute towards a national risk assessment. National risk assessment means that you must get a person from every sector in the Bahamas come together and assess 
what are the money laundering, terrorist financing risk? So the central bank issued their draft national, well, the AG through the central bank issued the draft national risk assessment of the Bahamas. In your email, when you get home, you will see the link. The day you will get the first 30 pages. So you must go home and read the other 137 pages. What's the second book in the Bible? There you go. <laughs> you must read it. Because you have to know where we are. Holistically, as a country. Where are we deficient? Because then you begin to see further down why we are doing what we are doing and why it is important to us. So it says the first thing <coughs> is you have to do a national risk assessment. So when you go to the central bank website, it says key findings. On the national level, the Bahamas faces internal and external money laundering and terrorist financing threats which include fraud, which is high, human smuggling, gun and drug smuggling, trafficking, trade-based schemes as the main threats emanating from a domestic origin. That means within the community. Fraud, inclusive of tax fraud, money laundering, drug trafficking, and trade-based schemes in other jurisdictions. I see people from the outside coming into the Bahamas and notice they are, they're actually doing the same crimes as the domestic market. Vulnerabilities identified at the national level were found to include one, we have to strengthen our AML framework in order to close that gap. And how was that done? They just revised the Proceeds of Crime Act and the Financial Transaction Reporting Act. And, and uh, yeah, now they're going to amend the FIU Act. They're going to amend, they're going to pass a new law to go along with the Data Protection Act. So all of those have to be changed. Because we're talking about an 18 year old piece of legislation. The need to boost resources, that's manpower, IT tools, formal procedures, specialized training for border control. So that's talking about, you see the police just got a little thing. You have one of those? Put on your shoulder to talk? No, the video camera. The little video camera thing? Yeah, I Okay, and then a lot of the, and then a lot of the key regulatory bodies don't have an IT platform for communication. They have to physically carry documents, so now they're going to put in systems that they'd be able to communicate with their registrants electronically. Then you have, is is difficult to regulate if you don't have the right personnel. So when it comes to a government agency, that is a problem. <coughs> you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to get the right people to work for a regulatory body that is quasi-government requires the government to support them more financially in order to support them the government needs money. And to get money, what does it have to do? Tax the people. Okay. So it is a vicious cycle. The things we have to do, but it requires money. So we're going to put all of this on paper. First, we need technology. Second, we need the manpower who knows technology. And second, we need to hire at the regulatory bodies, the persons who have the knowledge and the expertise to carry it out and enforce it. And that's why you all are here. So hopefully you will take this and grasp this and immerse yourself in it and apply it to what you do. So that when you move to the next stage, you will be one of those that the regulatory body needs to carry it forward and take it through where it needs to go. Because it's only just beginning more changes will come. Next one is the need to boost prosecutorial resources. What does that mean? You need to have a system in place to so prosecute these people when you, when you assess it and find that they prevent against the procedure. Right. 
So you will see the new proceeds of Crime Act. One of the key things that jump out at you is that now they're going to prosecute persons who knew that the proceeds of crime were for money laundering, but closed their eyes. They're going to prosecute those people. But one of the key things, again, the prosecution is in order to prosecute, the person who is actually preparing the documents or going to prosecute must know what money laundering is. You must know what terrorist financing is. Because people see, I could be a mechanic, and I can say I make 5,000 a month, but you must know that business. And that's why KYC is important. Because I can say I'm a mechanic, but I'm only fixing those little small cars that come from Japan. But I can be a mechanic and I fix Mercedes and BMW. The question I ask is how many clients do you have? And on average, how much does it cost to repair a car? And then you have an idea whether or not the funds that are coming in are legitimately from the car business or it's coming from somewhere else. And that's the problem we have in the Bahamas. So we have, we have problems from all different ends. <coughs> Regulatory body having the right personnel to carry out the law, having updated legislation to prosecute and make sure it includes all crime. Persons with the knowledge to know what money laundering is, how to identify it. And then you have the registrants or the licensees having the right people to know and understand what is money laundering from their perspective. That's the problem we have. Because like I say, from 2000, it's not that easy. All you're looking for is someone depositing cash. That doesn't exist anymore. They are crafty than us. We are a so-called third world. They are not coming, some of them, from third world countries anymore. The drugs may be produced in third world. The guns may be produced in a first or second world pass through another third world. Come through us, another third world, and go somewhere else. So if you look at our knowledge base, look at our experience, our travel exposure, they know more than us. And the only way you can get it is to understand the business. So those who would have done intro, I gave you some diagrams of how money actually moves. If you recall, in the very first chapter, I explained about money laundering. I told you how money just moves and flows and it all appears legitimately. And only when there's one action that happens within that train where you alert some international body, then they begin to search it out. Otherwise, it just flows. The need to boost resources for asset forfeiture investigators. Again, notice as I read all of these things, where they've identified vulnerabilities, these are areas that you can go into as an expert. After you've done the international course, there are other courses available. And you can become an expert in certain things. So it says the need to boost resources for asset forfeiture investigators, which means that you must have that skill to dig to find out where the assets are, how are they converted, and how you can get it back. And that's a skill. The need for identification and development of cross-cutting appropriate data collection and analysis techniques and mechanisms, and the need for regulatory briefings and outreaches to financial and non-financial sector licensees and registrants. All of the, reg the regulators have, since the passage of the new legislation, that they will all now reach out to their registrants and licensees more frequently. So that means there's many more industry briefings, many more emails, many much more direct contact with the money laundering reporting officers and the senior officials of entities. So like law firms now, they're required to be registered. The Compliance Commission will be contacting and speaking to you all more frequently 
telling you what is required. So everybody's going to be ring fenced into a regulator to ensure that you comply with the proceeds of Prime Act and the Financial Transaction Reporting Act. One of our weaknesses are lawyers and real estate mm -hmm. brokers. Because we started off by saying how money moves. So you take us as, again, a small country. What do we rely on to get U.S. dollars and foreign currency? Is it not foreign investors coming in to buy? And so in their field, they must know what money laundering is. You have to know. And then you have to know terrorist financing and proliferation of weapons. So they're not going to come in and say, my $1 million or my 500000 I got that from selling weapons. They're not going to tell you that at all. You have to be able to decipher and sense from your gut where this money came from by asking the right questions. And it's not a script. You cannot write 10 questions and every time a client comes, what's your name? Where you work? What'd you say you do? Okay, so how, how, what you interested in? It's not a script. You actually have to be connected to that person. And it comes from the gut. So it's just like when you as a police officer, if you see someone, you ask them a question. What do you, what do you look for first? I look for their reaction. Body language, the eye contact, the sweaty palms, the sweat beginning to drip. Going behind the air, scratching the finger. Everybody has some, yeah, something's not, yeah, they're, not, they're nervous, they're nervous. And then you have some that are just too cool. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So in this field, you got to take the time. If, if you can't take a class, read a book, watch a video on psychology. You have to know people and their mannerisms, how they speak, their eyes. Some people are just smooth talkers. And you got to be able to say whether or not what they're saying is the truth or not. And if you look them directly in the eye as they start talking the smooth talk, they begin to get nervous. Because then you start to ask them the hard questions that you know they don't have the answers to. And then they begin to stumble. So in, 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 in this field, in this area, if this is what you want to do, it is not a guessing game. Because you could go to jail. And you can be fined. And as you can see, the CFATF said that we have not prosecuted enough people. So prosecution doesn't just mean the criminals. It also means the directors on the board, the senior management of companies, and the compliance officer. And if you were the system and you were a part of all of it, well, of course, you'll be fired. And you can't work in that field anymore. So it is a very serious job now, and there are penalties. So the next one says, and there are also sector-specific high-level findings. So when you read the report, each sector has its own specific findings as the threats that they face. Now all of these threats means that the government now, after it's finished this proceeds of Crime Act, and the Financial Transaction Reporting Act, that was to comply with the CFATF deficiencies. With all of these threats, now they have to go and look at how do we address these? What other pieces of legislation we need to amend? And that's why I say it's an ongoing business. We cannot be like how we were before. We wait 18 years for someone to walk in our country and tell us we are deficient because we fell asleep. What will we be doing in 18 years? Seriously, what will we be doing in 18 years? What, what, what will we be working on? What did we do? <laughs> what will we be doing in 18 years? No, I'm serious. What will we, what will we do? Seriously, what will we be doing? If this is our second industry, what will we be doing? Now, what will we be doing? I'm serious. If you look at what you said has changed, what have and the world was moving ahead. 
We're, not, we're now focusing on technology when all of the domestic banks have already implemented it. And they implemented it more than four or five years after their parent. So we're talking about nine years in this gap. What will we be doing? Because even all of our young people in school now and all of the public schools don't know technology. So how are we going to face the world and how are we going to compete? So we have two gaps. The young ones don't know what to do and all of us don't know what to do. We're all behind. So people always ask me why I always watch crime movies. That's what I watch. And I watch it to know the minds of criminals. I watch it to see body language, how they react, what do they do. Because I find that a lot of movies, once you become a movie watcher like me, you know movies that are just someone throw it on the head, and movies that are actually based on things that actually happen to people community. And then you will see how people learn the money. Because everything is normal. I run, I use the same one as a, a a mechanic shop, a high-end mechanic shop. But I have friends who come, who need favors, who bring their cars to me, who more or less say they have five cars to be serviced, and money moves. So here in the Bahamas, you have to learn how to detect money laundering. And the country is so slow, it should be obvious. But the CFATF no. says they don't see it. Because we're so small and everybody knows somebody who could tell somebody what to yeah, do. But if, but if I you, mean, I'm not saying that's yeah, right, but... If keep, but, but, if you keep, but if you keep that perception, we will die. Mm -hmm. We will die. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to report it when you see it, because it doesn't make any sense. Because the mechanic will still wear his dirty clothes. Because he's not really making any money. The money's just flowing through him. And whatever he gets for that service, he probably pays a bill. Because the cost of living in the Bahamas is very high. So you're not going to see it like that. It's going to pass through his account. But he and his life will not change. Because those days of moving from being in jeans and t-shirt to all of a sudden in a suit don't happen anymore. Those people are all dead now. Their children wear suits. So you would not drug deal on arms trafficker if you saw them. You may meet the man who carries the bag. You may meet the person that does the, um, the boat. But these are the things that have been cognizant of. So this is the National Risk Assessment, and I've given you the highlights of what the government says that they are facing. So this is a work in itself. Then you have the FATM recommendation that you must know. That's the International Bible. <coughs> oh, why your face look like that? This is not that difficult. So then it moves into money laundering and confiscation. Then it moves into terrorist financing and financing of proliferation. And financing of proliferation is an area that the Bahamas did not focus on in 2000. So now they have to focus on it. The pressure is on us because of gun smuggling in the Bahamas. We don't make it. We have no parts to make it, but it is here. And when you look at the different types of weapons that the police is seizing, it tells you where they are coming from. It doesn't matter that it's not in the press. If you read and you watch television, you will know they're not made here. But they are coming in. And a gun, as you can see when you watch any World War movie or any army movie or any movie to do with action, they come in parts. You clip them together. So you're not gonna see a box come. Like when you watch the, the fake movies with a big crate, and they're all assembled. It doesn't work that way. Unless it's a country to country buying guns, which is different, because it's a legitimate business trade.
But when you're doing smuggling, you're sending them in parts. And it's for the person at the very end who would put it together based upon what you want. So look at the type of guns that come here. Where do you think they're coming from? Mm -hmm. I mean, who uses guns all the time? I mean, why would a behemoth need an AK-47? Who are they shooting? Bulls? Cows? Horses? You don't have any of those things. They shooting the police. I know what I'm saying. They have no reason. And the thing is that they do not understand the force of these, of these weapons. They think it's a toy. It is not a toy. These are weapons people use in war. But the point is that they are going somewhere or to someone for whatever purpose. And that's why the attention is on us. The small country. And when we say the country, everybody just looks at the capital. Because that happens here. 21 by 7. And we have a gun smuggling problem. <laughs> and it's a serious problem. No, we don't have any war. No. But we have weapons. And so if we can have gun smuggling, then we can have people who will actually transship material needed for weapons of mass destruction. Think about it now. Because for us, as always, it's a pass through. It's a money making business. The same way we do human smuggling. We don't care what the, what the product is. We do, you carry it where it needs to go. In order for you to pass it through these waters, that's what smuggling is, you have to pay the price. We will carry the goods for you, whether they land or not. You get a deposit, and you get the balance. So whatever it is, we win. That's the problem we face today. And we can see that drugs are still here. Drugs are still coming in because we have a lot of water. It's so sad. And no one tells nobody nothing. But the drugs are here. Don't know, not a law, no. So you have drugs, you have human smuggling, you have gun trafficking. And then you add on top of that, the saying that always being here from, I was a child, my mother and father worked in a hotel, and that's theft. And it's worse now than ever before. Because how can you be a teller on a front line and steal at the same time, with all the cameras on you? How is that possible? Why would you do that? But we have that too. Theft, blatant theft. Go to this food store, they try to steal every day. Try to either swipe it fast or pretend they can't count. But some can't count. Yeah, but Jesus. What? <laughs> from my <laughs> what I'm saying from right now, from when, you, when we began to spoke about ago. corruption, I'm telling you it's, it's a cultural thing. It's a mindset. No, but anyway, I'm going to go there. I was going to say something, but. Hmm? We found it on that. When we talk about prohibition, ram running, all that, we just found it on it. Yes, we are. But that didn't mean we have to stay there. No. A lot of countries have changed. Yeah, we have to. Changed. We learned it from the people who were here before. And it's ingrained. I don't, yeah. And the higher echelon. Because they didn't want to change it. Because it worked for them. And they got rich. And so now they're doing it again. And like I said, the second time we spoke when I came in is, it won't change until we change. That's the key. We stay quiet, it continues. We either live or we die. So it's, it's, it's a decision that we have to make. You're gonna take this, Immerse yourself in this topic and become experts in it in order to carry it out. Or you're going to come here, read it, pass the exam, and carry on the life as business as usual. But the challenge is up to you. And I, see you get I can read the passion in the answers. I can tell who just regurgitating and who's taking the time to study.
regurgitating the right day. We can get we can get out here. <laughs> just okay. Not even from the intro? No. Not five minutes. No. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean you wouldn't you wanna know what you're going right and wrong? Mm -hmm. So you could because you can come right back or at least leave to the final thing, eh? Wouldn't you get a glance at it? Let's see if you're gonna write that. <laughs> You pass, right? Yeah, no, I know. You got the grade, right? Yeah, I get the it's grade. It's 100, right? Yeah. Uh, how far were you from 100? I, not that, far. That tells you plenty. <laughs> you sort of be excited to know some things. Because even, <laughs> even when it came down to how you were talking about being mm -hmm. passionate about things, right? When it came down to some of them essay questions, you want to know. Yeah, you yeah, 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 I just put a line through it. I stop. That's <laughs> 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 what the BS is talking about. That's it there. Line go through. Stop. There was kind of close. No, man. No, they were not. You had a crash in there talking about the majority. You had a crash in there. This is the freaking wheel. You had a crash in there. You had a crash in there. Ask them about. You say if if the majority of Money laundering is terrorist finance, and it's the most of money laundering. Yeah, yeah. Finance. like four questions. And I think, what you want? What was the right answer for that? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. But, <laughs> but see, again, that's what I'm saying is understanding, not memorizing. I'm most of the majority, so we can give it. It's understanding. Because when I write the exam, I'm not writing the exam based on freedom. Understand what it is. That's the key thing. And so a lot of people could only regurgitate the points. If I asked you what are the predicate crimes, the proceeds of crime, what are the predicate crimes for money laundering that's in the proceeds of crime act, what would you say? Some people said one, two, three, four, five, and just drop them down. No. What does it mean? That's how I know a difference between someone who will get yeah, ten out of ten and someone who will get four out of ten. Because you just drop them down, you regurgitate it. But if you took each one and explained what it is and why it is a predicate crime, then you get 10 out of 10. That's a difference. It tells me you understand. Yeah, well, when you press them for time, it's actually the Because then I'm actually giving you the best. And you press them for time, you're really trying to expand. Three hours? All right. Seven and eight questions. Okay. All right, see, it's three hours sound long to you because you know that this stuff. You was, you know. Seven essay questions in the middle. When you, when you press for time, you just listen. What, what you know is true. All right, first, the exam is on the whole book. See, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Right, right, you know, right there. 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 You know what that is by definition. You know what that is by definition. Then it only spoke about KYC, the role of the money laundering officer, and then the international requirements on a scale of it. So if we talk what we did today, would you think my question would be on exam? That's question on the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What have we done in <laughs> That same question on the board. So you see how much things we have discussed today mm -hmm. on just that? Mm -hmm. So if I gave you an essay on that question, you cannot come and give me three points out of your head because it's a big topic. Exactly. So, Mr. so unless Sasha. you start by giving me a thesis statement as to what you think are the most important ones, when you start dropping here and dropping there and dropping there, it makes no sense to me. Because we have we did these by going around the room and casting ideas. We were brainstorming. So now you read the chapter, you look at the points we made, you look at the question that was posed, and you in your mind formulate how will I answer that question. The key point based on what I do. 
So if a police officer, they will look at these points and they will apply it to what they do. Because when they write, they will write based on the experience. And that, and that gives me a better understanding that you know. I mean, I say no doesn't mean what's in the book, but you can apply it to what you do. Now for you who work in operations, for you to answer this, you would take this as an individual. So what about you wake up? You wake up all. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You're going to write this from the passion that you feel as a citizen and the business that you are in, the industry. Why is this important to your bank? Why is everybody running around like they're crazy? Why are they walking every day going to a meeting? Why is the Attorney General keep calling people to come to a meeting? Why is this important to us? And the answers we've already gone through. Second industry, we're trying to survive. So that is how you answer a question. Mr. Archer, what you said is correct. I'm not disputing that's not correct in the right way, but I'm just saying when you have a certain amount of time, and you have a certain amount of questions, and you have to go in depth with all those questions. I mean, time don't be sufficient it's because it's so it's much preparation. to know. Yeah. Even though you're reading it, it's mm -hmm. still, you still require to memorize some things because some things you need to know the definition too, and then you can like talk about it in that way. Okay, I'm gonna right there. The first thing is after each chapter when you go home, if you're not gonna do it today, you're between now and next Friday. Because next Friday night you're going to read chapter two. You need to go. Yes. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is, if you're going to if you're going to make if you're going to make this the second step in the journey to become a professional, you have to immerse yourself in this. So you cannot wait until the week before the final to start memorizing definitions. It's too late. Right. So you need to start knowing what money laundering is. You did it already in intro. You know there are three stages. You've already been through that. So you don't have to do that anymore. You're now at a higher level. You're looking now at why is all of this important to us and what are we doing now? That's what this first chapter is about. So by the, by the time you get the final exam, you should have an idea of what the 40 recommendations are. You don't have to know them one, two, three, four, five, six, 40. You must know in essence what are they about. What do they cover? Then you should know where the Bahamas is on this national risk assessment. No, that's the link you're going to get. I give you a number. Excuse me. You're going to know where we are, where our deficiencies are, where our threats are. Hmm. That's important. Are, yeah. Then you're going to know that based upon what we had, from 2000 and what we have been doing, how do we measure up to the 40 recommendations? That's key. And to know that, you have to be able to read and understand third book of the Bible. You're gonna get the link and you're gonna read all of it. And you're gonna find out where we are. And let me tell you why this is important now. If you go to the next stage, which is the the um, international one, you don't have time to read these. So imagine if you just decided to enroll in the international one. You'll have to read the 40, that one, this one, and many more. Because you have two assignments to do and one final exam. And as we said, when we walk around, people said, A hey, is very hard to get. Very, very hard. And you only can get it if you know it. An examiner looks for the same things, I'm telling you. So I'm training you now to put your mind in the right frame to get there. That's what they're looking for. They want to see what's the latest legislation. Do you know what's happening in your country? Do you know what's happening in your organization? What is changing locally? What is changing internationally, and how does it affect what we're doing on an international scale, and how does it affect your country? That's what they're looking for, to get an A. Thanks for that, Tim. I'm going to be supporting that.
Why won't you be doing that? Mm-hmm. They sent you the link. So you can go and read it. So you cannot tell me you didn't have a lot of work to do. Yeah, my birthday this week. And, and children celebrate birthdays. I believe. I think the 21 is milestone. So the next one is when you're 50. Next one is when you retire. And the next one when you're getting ready on your last leg. Huh? <laughs> Say what? I'm not trying to kill you. Read this in the night. Yeah, my husband. Oh, about just one year old. I'm beginning to wonder if I did me a favor. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I think I did get in there. I can't say busy now. You what? I can honestly say busy. You busy? Yeah. No, I'm saying because of this. Don't bother me. I'm busy. Yeah, but you have the plan. Yeah. So you know you have these things to read. And so you have to plan where you're going to get up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., or 5 a.m. And take two hours each day and read with no disturbances. And immerse yourself in it. Okay? So I, I was thinking, I, you were talking about death earlier. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, interesting, I know there was about two months ago, there was a B.O.B. person mm-hmm. who conducted or kind of dealt with theft, you know, stole money, etc. but through the use of cards, he was in the IT side of things. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't just in the front line, like you say, with the tellers, but he was doing things on a technological basis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And luckily they caught him. But that's the domestic level, and, and that's good. Mm-hmm. Internationally, my problem is that we're very reactive. All of our laws and everything that's drafted and coming up, that's, that's, yeah. but they're based on the systems of um, first world Four countries, countries yes. that have the infrastructure to support the yes. burden of those um, obligations. Mm-hmm. We are now at a massive deficit level where we have to, as you've been doing this today here, train personnel, have the boost of resources you talked about, and mm-hmm. asset forfeiture, investigators, and all the rest of those things. And that doesn't happen overnight. No. And like growing growing and we're behind. And we're massively we're behind. behind. So we're now in a period of time where while we have to do something, I'm not trying to be um, pessimistic about it, but we have a long way to go before we can actually sustain the obligations mm-hmm. of what's being put on top of us. Yes. And then either business is going to be affected yeah. because companies are not going to leave because we have to tax things to get the money to now train the persons. Mm-hmm. It's very onerous. Yes. Um, From all fronts. So. I, I am being pessimistic by saying to you, I don't know how successful we're going to be over the next five years. I don't believe the blacklisting is going to be removed in May. I don't think any of those things are just going to be happening the way everybody No, it doesn't, it doesn't happen as quick as that, but the optimism helps you. It gives you a light at the end of the tunnel. If you're That's in this true. business, you know that it's not going to happen like that. Right. We know why. If you look at it, Wendy would have started at the very beginning in this whole business. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the history of the Bahamas' financial sector. Don't look all blank, because I'll give you the next chapter of the Bible. (laughs) (laughs) You must know how we got into this business. Because all these people are doing is reclaiming what came here. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. At the very beginning, this part of the world was the place to go to secure your money in a time of World War II. And we grew an industry out of it. Of course, we weren't in charge then. (laughs) Their brothers and sisters were in charge of these little islands. Where they were in the Caribbean, but they were out on the side of Japan and Africa. They run those, because they're all former colonies. So they know this is where the monies are. And now all these countries have grown World wars are over. They're all modernizing. <coughs> They're moving into technology. They say we need the support from the money from all your parents and grandparents and great grandparents <laughs> that they stored over here. We want that back. Mm-hmm. War over. So we would have, our whole economy is based on that sector. So now they put pressure. So making 80,000, 100,000, 110, 150, 120, so you can go back to make 20. Mm-hmm. Go back to other countries. So they create. Here, but you make $100 a month. 
go to countries where you tow the line and get your loaf of bread for the month. And the stuff that's actually day one. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Look at us compared to other countries. Two, it's a surprise when they walk here and they walk on Bay Street. That's they stopping. Mercedes, 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 BMW, Rolls Royce, Jaguar. Like, where's this money coming from? Where they come from, you don't see those cars. And they are from some of the big countries. They can't afford them. Because they pay taxes. 40% of your income go to income tax. That's not the other tax when you buy things like that. That's not the tax when you go over the bridge. They need the money that's outside the country to support their way of living, which is not our way of living. You get paid, you take it all home. Besides a little small NIV that everybody complains about, because that's not real tax. So the pressure is on us. So there, therein lies the problem. Yes. So you have you have the big pressure now. What he's talking about, which has to do with tax evasion, tax avoidance, and then you also have the problem with all of these criminal elements still coming to the offshore jurisdiction, but again, not by bags of cash, but using technology and the products and services we offer. So now when we um, have all our legislative laws, the, 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 all the laws we need to have in order to remove from the blacklist, right? And once they're satisfied that we, you know, do mm -hmm. what we're supposed mm -hmm. to do, then they can leave us alone, no. right? No, no, no. Thank you no. very much. No. Thank you very no. much. No, no. See, no. See, that just, happened here. See, my thing is, right, I legislation, understand. Legislation is one thing. Enforcing it is the next thing. Okay. So we were criticized right here by the CFATF for enforcement. I don't care how well we do. I don't care if we enforce, we do what we're supposed to do. They're always going to have a problem with us simply because of the fact that you said that they want their money back. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I don't care. I don't care how much we enfast the laws, we create the laws, we enforce them. We we line up all our ducks in a row. Yes, yeah, they'll come with something they else later. Still, mm -hmm. yeah. They just don't like the way that we're living. We're third world. We're not supposed to be this comfortable. That's that's yes. how I feel. They don't want us to sit at their table. No. And they know that Thank we you have the very potential much. to do so. So all this garbage mm -hmm. they're doing, mind you, unfortunately because of our position. You know, we have to fall in line, basically, you know, because of the world mm -hmm. and all that stuff, right? But we know this is nothing but to do I, with... But, I, but, I, but, 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 but unfortunately, from, we have to... look at it from a domestic level, what are we going to replace it with? Mm -hmm. That's why I say it's unfortunate for us. It'll be like when you watch a movie. It'll be like when you watch a movie. All cars stop. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. All those with luxury line of cars, they stop. Because there is no money to support that second pillar. Do you suffer any question? Mm -hmm. What will happen if we don't, if we don't get removed from this blacklist? Come, me. Die. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let me ask you a question. From history, could you think of any other country that was blacklisted for like, let's just say, three, four years in comparison? Because I know with us, we just blacklisted and we got removed. Mm -hmm. In comparison, any other country you could think of right now who was blacklisted, let's just say, for two years straight? What, give me a comparison so I can know where we stand in this. The only other countries I know that had deficiencies mm -hmm. would have been the countries in Eastern Europe. But, they get but their stuff. background, yeah, their background is different from us. Exactly. Because from as we come, we come together. We may be individual countries, but we come together in terms of if you have the support from, like Cayman, they have Britain. Right. So you Cayman legislation come out like that. The rest of us look at it, change a few words, mm -hmm. and pass it. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Because if we had to sit down here and write that ourselves. Mm -hmm. One, it'll never get finished. <laughs> Two, it will not pass. No. So that's what we're doing now. We're looking at the countries that are not on the list. 
what did they do? That's what I said. And we're taking theirs and tweaking it a little bit and see if they will accept it. That's what we're doing. So, because we don't want to do what we did here. Here we went too far. Mm -hmm. We're trying not to lose the little bit of clients that we have left. But see, the FATF pulls the strings of the CFATF. Yes. So you right. So you so you so you have two forces, right? I put them together as one. Mm -hmm. Two. Three. Exactly. Three, them on our, three monkeys on our back. And then we try to be strong and say, we'll sign the bilateral for CRS. Yes. The CD. But we always knew we were going to sign the multilateral. Yeah. Because they told us what to do, basically. Yeah. So they flew in and they said, you have no choice. Right. Sign. So now we're doing the multi. But we're behind, way behind. We, because we, are, we, didn't we are so it. behind until in, this is April, yeah. mm -hmm. next yeah. month, yeah. we'll get the ratification. And September 1st, we have to submit. Exactly. And so that all of the citizens who have not voluntarily disclosed when we release on the 1st depends on how much tax they have to pay, all of those accounts will close. So my problem is we're trying to sit at the table, but we don't play, we ain't playing with the same set of cards. No, you can't. You never will. Exactly. So it's just that you're trying to play a game of poker. And you're sitting around the table with a bunch of seasoned people who've been playing poker for 10 years. You pop in, you never played before, what happened? Unless you have great luck, you will lose all. So what we're doing then, and sorry, this way I'm thinking about it. What we're doing then is trying to find new industries for ourselves here by complying with what's done. Yes, um, yes. No pun in compliance, yes. right? So that we could continue to survive. Yes. So we need other industries. Yes, <laughs> to support this one. Right in order to keep it alive. Because we'll go corporate tax, then we'll probably go income tax. Yes, yeah. Corporate tax. Mm -hmm. So we need people who have knowledge on taxation, people who have knowledge on investigation, people who have more knowledge on cybercrime. And that's why you need to know money laundering, and terrorist financing, and proliferation of weapons. And that's why it's class. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. I think yeah, it's it is a, it is a, it is, I, I tried to begin the, the first class so you can put it in context and not see it in a vacuum. And these are just the Because as you go through this chapter, I want you to apply it to what we are dealing with. So if we look at the FATF, which is, this is international. This is Caribbean, but we know that it feeds through here. You have the 40 recommendations, which you have in your hand already, right? Mm -hmm. And when you go to the next level, you will see that the FATF has typologies. And typology means that they have gone out and done their research and they have reports on various threats that affect their recommendations. So they have one on diamonds, smuggling. They have one on, on piracy. So all of the threats that you see we put in our vulnerabilities, some of those already have international reports on how it is carried out, which countries are affected. Those are the typologies. You also know that the FATF carries out evaluations on the countries to see where they are in complying with the 40 recommendations. And based on that, then they will tell you what the deficiencies are. So how long they was given us these? Let me ask you a question. Do they give deficiencies and warnings before they do blacklists? Or they just call up on you and, and evaluate you and then blacklist you if you ain't meet the requirements? No, you're not blacklisted under this one here. This one here, you are monitored. Which means that the Bahamas has to send 
responses to the deficiencies, what they're going to do, and they do it over and over again mm -hmm. until they feel that you've addressed it adequately. Mm -hmm. Then they come back and test again. So this could be a four to five year process, but we have to get rid of this. Because this means that we are not meeting the 40 recommendations. Which means that we are more susceptible to these. Which means that this here and being monitoring affects this. It affects that. That's how all of this feeds in together. So, so this is about to be you already have the report from the CFATF that you're going to go and read, 137 pages, and you'll see where we're deficient and what they are looking for where our weaknesses are in the 40. So if I give you an essay question to discuss at least three events, I don't know the number yet, of the deficiencies and how the Bahamas is seeking to address them, you should be able to answer them. So that's on the Caribbean front. Now when we go here, Another international front we have to deal with the base erosion. <laughs> we have to talk about corporate tax. Remember the whole focus here is on tax now. And the United States is not a party, the CRS, but they're also on tax. So based on this here, we have a new Proceeds of Crime Act and a Financial Transaction Reporting Act coming up soon. Amendment to the FIU Act. Um, I think the Data Protection has a new, a new act. It's not going to call it something different. Some data protection, something. And the Compliance Commission. So what are we trying now, I mean, for the Bahamas in terms of getting off this blacklist? Are we doing what we need to do? Blacklist is here. This is blacklisting here. This here is monitoring. Here, we're in compliance. And I'm going to put a question mark there because the United States in conjunction with the OECD will now be looking at the reporting and they're now in the phase after we've already reported for the last two years, when they get the one for the third year, they're gonna be sending back responses to the various countries because they have time to do investigations. Okay, so this, this one here will be beginning, this one will be coming after that. They will speak to each other. That's all it says. We all know that. Okay. That's all this is. So you are the biggest offshore market in the world. Because we love the all the first world right countries onshore. trying to pull everything from the yes. yes. world countries and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, we're waiting on responses from countries to tell us whether we are efficient. Yes. But remember now with the United States with their offshore market and they're about to introduce another offshore market. So right? Now. We have a lot of these people mm -hmm. incorporating companies here and depositing it down here. Mm -hmm. So both countries are looking for their money. <laughs> <laughs> or you have these people here, incorporating countries here, and coming down here. No, ma no matter how you look at it, it's coming here. Passing through here like the drugs, or staying here. So your question is, where are we now off the blacklist? The blacklist is this. 
They've signed all of the treaties. They're waiting on ratification. But so, the OECD has not accepted. They want it more robust. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple pieces of legislation to come out. That's the Multinational Enterprise Act. That's going to cover IBCs, foundations, executive entities, all of those new products we just introduced in the last, I wouldn't say 18 years. Say in the last five to six years, in order to remain competitive with other offshore jurisdictions, we've introduced these new products to structure our clients' wealth or their estate planning and asset protection. They're saying to us is that those can be used for money laundering. You have to regulate them. So, Ms. Um, Ms. Archer, oh shoot, I forgot what I was going to ask you. I'm sorry, when I remember that. That with this oh, piece. I remember. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead. But now forgive me because honestly, I never really paid attention to stuff this deep before. Um, the whole money laundering, right? The blacklisting. Which one? That we're on. I understand we're on the bla on the yes. blacklist, right? Uh -huh. When they blacklist you, is there a level, or is just, or you're just on the blacklist? Right, right now, we're right? just on the blacklist because we have already deposited our documents. They haven't put any sanctions or restrictions against us as yet mm -hmm. because our documents were already there. Okay. The problem is that the people who vote to put you on the blacklist mm -hmm. are not the people who review your documents. Mm -hmm. The people who vote to put you on the blacklist do not have a discussion. They just vote on what's put before them. This is so. We've signed the agreements. We have this draft legislation, which will ring fence those products that they say can be used for money laundering, which means that all of those companies now have to have audited financials. So if you're a CPA, you can make money. Another avenue is coming. Can I ask you if you're in the compliance world, then you have to understand those products, what they are used for. If you're in the legal profession, you could, you already made your money on incorporating it, but you may have to find other products that they can use. And then maybe you have to be, become creative to find another product that doesn't fall within the ambit of those, because they actually list them. And it includes international um, charitable organizations, mm -hmm. which of course falls under terrorist financing. So they ring fence all of those last products and put them in. So that's what this does. This attacks our products and services. So And I put your IBC foundations. Um, charitable organizations and um, the bees, Bahamas executive entities. Because you know we could use the Purpose Trust, which is our next new product on the charitable organization. So they, they've just ring fenced them all. All those new products, they say they can be used for money laundering. They've also said that those entities must have an economic presence in the Bahamas. And the draft legislation explains what that means. So remember in 2000, when they came with a suitcase of money, they also said that the number of banks in the Bahamas was huge. And they said that because on every wall there were a lot of plaques. They don't want any more plaques for these companies. They must have a reason to be here. They must have a residence. They must have staff. They must contribute to the local economy. Which is strange for an IBC, obviously. Yes, it is. So that means that the persons that own IBC now have to spend more money. money. Which means I'm out. Which means I'm out. <laughs> if I'm not really making money with it, I'm out. And I'm gonna go over to one of our regional competitors. Think yes. Who don't have to do, who can do what we do, but don't have to do what they do, because they have parent. Yep. We're on our own. Oh, so, so that's, that, that, that is why it's like, 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. And the other ones. Okay. That I like. That. I always wondered why they were like that. Yeah, because because they fall here. I I always. They fall here. I. Okay. And they're just the children. Okay. We we sit over here in this water by ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's no one to call. There's no red phone and there's and no that, gold phone. Okay. None. That explains a lot. You are here by yourself. In a dinghy, in the middle of the ocean, by yourself, with the sun on you. And one piece of bread to give. And one piece of bread and one jug of water. And they're telling you, and no oars. And they're telling you, row. You know, this or swim. And that's how you look at it, being realistic. That's how we are. We're in a boat, in the middle of the water, with the sun dead hot, and they say, row. But you know what I do. So where you going? Yeah. Going left? You going right? Going down. Yeah. Yeah. You going down? <laughs> now we going up. They have fun. Yeah. But going you see what I'm saying? Damn. And you have to be real about what's happening. I used to believe that having a relationship with the Caribbean, of which the Caribbean don't actually consider us to be a Caribbean. No, because we're not. No. Right. Um, would have been beneficial to us, but in fact, they are more of a weight. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because so uh, you have to look at it. I know a lot of you would have been on cruises and stuff. So if this is us, and this is, let's say this is the rest of the Caribbean chain, what do you see? A lot of them have their own currency like us, but they're on par with the United States. They are far away from the USA. A lot of them have European visitors, but their way of living is not the same as ours. You don't you don't drive in and see you know lines of Mercedes and BMW right. and Jaguars and right. houses and gated communities and That's you don't right. see that. People don't have private planes pull up on the lake. You don't see that no. unless you're looking at an all non-resident community. You don't see locals with that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. So to them we're not a part of them because they're still in the struggle. So when they say us, that's them, not us. Mm -hmm. And you can remember in the past, most of these people came to the Bahamas for training for what they do. So they've always looked after us. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's where we are today. So this is a good profession to be in because you learn a lot. But you have to keep abreast of what's happening in the world. That's quite interesting. And that's why I said at the very beginning, you have to immerse yourself in this. Because you have to know what's happening on all fronts. And how does this affect us? What is the Bahamas doing? And what do we need to do differently? So if you've never taken the chance to read anything about technology, it's time to start it now. If you've never taken the time to learn about gun smuggling, you can do it now. If you don't know about money laundering and how it happens, you need to read it now. The same thing with terrorist financing and the same thing with human smuggling. You have to read it to understand how all of this comes together. Because like we said, people just pass through to go where they need to go. Either coming this way, going that way, coming this way, going that way, coming up, going across, it all affects us. I, uh, I think, if I can remember correctly, you mentioned something about them um, getting more stringent with our border protection mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Okay, they, they really need to. So we can't build a wall. <laughs> no, I know we can't. That's not possible. No, I'm just saying the measures, because I've been watching a series on Netflix. Um, border protection, actually, it's called. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were highlighting how the United States the things they do to protect their borders, the different things they encounter. How can we protect the borders? How? The, the, the things they encounter. Can we have access? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, definitely. Are buy the boats? Mind you, you pay the staff? remember now, Ms. Archer, we don't mind paying taxes if we can see. That's a different issue. But we know that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, we don't mind paying taxes, you know. So if they're gonna, if they're gonna tax us, then do what you said. Now, it's gonna be done. Yeah, but. That could be, a, that's, a, that's, that's a different issue. That's a different issue. Yeah, that's a different but issue. But to protect our borders, we have to get 
resources that know how to protect our borders. That's the first thing. So that's a knowledge-based issue. Training. Then you need equipment. And equipment is expensive because, again, we don't build boats. Nor do we have the parts to build the boats. Nor do we know the technology to build a boat. We got to buy it. One boat could cost millions of dollars. Where we can get it from? And look at the priority of things we have to do. Yeah. Think about it now. In this, this country today, is that a priority on a scale of one to five? Do we have that kind of money to go for boats? If right now the second industry is dying, the first one is dying because Bay Street has not been revitalized. Tourists complain there's nothing to be done. The rats are bigger than the dogs. People need training. People don't know what service is. They have big issues. Children come out, can't read, can't count, don't know how to dress. We have problems. On Netflix, show on Pablo's on drug lords and Pablo Escobar's their first episode. Mm -hmm. and it has said uh, he bought an island in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and that's why you see the planes in the ocean. They would use them like burner phones. Yeah. They would just crash land them, basically, mm -hmm. leave them there, and then that's disseminate good. the drugs. Yeah, do what they have to do. Into wherever USA, here, yeah, yeah. as you say, a pass through. It's a pass through. Mm -hmm. But they're coming by air, yeah. land, mm -hmm. submarine. They come, because we only have water. But we can't police that. Like we can't police said, it. Because so. all we have is water. Now, if you say you're transshipping something to the United States, it only can go by air or by land. And most likely, it'll go by land. Because by air, of course, you know you need air traffic controllers. But if you're going by land, then it's border control again as you go through each point. But guess what? You don't have to use the highway. You could go underground where you're not stopped, unless a police stop you for either your brake lights, your headlights, or your speeding. And you can transship until you get to the border where you need to go. But in the Bahamas, you fly over the air, and any little thing you clean passing by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but wasn't there at one point when the U.S. was here monitoring a lot of that stuff, like back in the 80s, early 90s? Mm -hmm. They were on some of the other islands. They still there. They're still there. They're still there. It was the same as if their presence was really. They're still there, but you gotta. But you, it's like everything else. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, what's important to you? If you have your orders that there's a large shipment coming in from so and so, am I really gonna watch the one little little load that's passing by? No, I'm trying to catch the bigger fish. So you know when that little plane says in the past in one five six two that belong to so and so, and they only carry in half a bill. I don't want that. I even know when that land. I know where that's going, but that's not the one I want. Remember now, in the past days, you catch anything with flight. Today, with technology and strategy, you get into the source. Notice the arrest recently. They're not on a little small drug tra trafficker on the corner, you know. They arrest them, may send them to jail for six months, or let them go. Because I don't want you. I want the information you have to get the person that's behind it. You're not important. That's why people still sell drugs on the street. You're not important. I don't want you. I want the head man. Because when I chop off his head, then I kill the business. That's the strategy of the day. Before, they caught all the rest, all the people on the corners, all the people in the plane, send them to jail. And what happened? They flourished. Because you didn't get the head. That's the same thing with drugs, smuggling. Same thing with human smuggling. The man with the little boat who's carrying the people from here to the United States, if he doesn't know who's the person at the very end, who's shipping them out all the time, you arresting him, it's, you're not getting any information. You have to know who is behind it. And so you will let one or two boats go by, arrest them, send them to jail for three years, but you gotta give information. So for my two ladies here, that's the strategy of the government when you're looking at crime, especially this kind of crime. Do I just arrest you and throw you in jail, or do I use you to find out more about this business? How does it work? Who is it behind? Where is it coming from? And it's all based on what you know from reading. 
All right, have a great week. Yes. I was just going to say, Go ahead. I, I found it interesting when I was looking at the FCSPA and the draft legislation. Mm -hmm. They were putting a lot more of the onus on uh, less senior positions. Yes. And saying that your knowledge uh, threshold doesn't <coughs> have to be as high as it used to be. No. You can't say, oh, I was doing work for the boss. No. Or I was no. doing work for the company. No, everybody's job. Everybody's job. So it's refining that, like you say, it's focusing that on this job, noticing it, recognizing it, and then reporting it. Yeah. Even if it comes to nothing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Sorry, everybody. No, that's fine. <laughs> Actually, I thought we were finishing the well. Yes. You want to know? Right. Oh, you're designed? Okay. Um, well, my name is on paper. <laughs> um, I was a former regulator for 32 years at the Central Bank, mm. developing policies and guidelines to regulate banks and trust companies. Then I moved into commercial banking, and now I'm in offshore banking. So my background is in economics and finance and management, and I'm a lawyer by profession. I've traveled to every country in the world except Africa and Russia. Sean, you were a bank, so I ain't that long. Representing the Bahamas government, <laughs> defending our country. Let me borrow it, please. You don't want to go to Russia anyway. Oh, I do. Um, that's a country with a lot of money. And I understand how money laundering works. Mm. You have to you have to feel it. That's why I find a lot of countries. You can read it, you can watch movies, you can meet them, but you have to see where they live. To get an understanding. So just as if you see you met a millionaire from the Bahamas and you're in France or Sudan, and you try to figure out with it. Yeah. How did you make it? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Well, you you have to come here and see it. So the oligarch takes the money by the football team in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and then so on and so on. Yes, so you have, you have, to, know, you have to know the environment. All right? Happy reading. <laughs> Report to the second handout. Okay. That's the for uh, the whole of them. That's 137, so you can have the link sent by email. Oh, she's got okay. Yeah. yeah, they'll send you the link. And the uh, 40 recommendations for the FATO. Mm -hmm. I want to you realize I get up here, right? I try and decide if I stick in with this or not. Oh, okay. this, uh -huh. you, you stick with this, my, you can get it. I, it's interesting, the, but it's depressing <laughs> because. You don't care. It's depressing you know, you. to know so what's unless, really unless happening. Comes, That's why sometimes, sometimes they say ignorance is bliss. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes.
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Even though it's not, well. it's really not good to be ignorant about stuff, but yeah. boy, it's a serious no. thing. No. But I like to look at it like once you start to figure it all out and you know it, then maybe.